Hey, Gussie. What? Guess what we're going to make? What? <gasps> we're going to make a peach galette. Do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. Do you guys know what a peach galette is? <laughs> okay, a peach galette is like the most yummy, no-brainer version of peach pie. Do you love peach pie? Mm -hmm. Should we make one? Mm -hmm. Do you think Daddy and the boys will be excited? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the boys are at school, and Gussie and I are going to make a peach galette. You guys are going to love this. This is such a great recipe, and Gus is the perfect dough maker. You want to help me? Mm -hmm. Can you bring the stool over? Can you bring it over and we'll get started? I'm going to run into the pantry, get a few things. You bring the stool over, right over to the Cuisinart, okay? Right over here. Okay? And I'm going to grab some little goodies. Now don't touch any of those buttons. This is always my deal with Gus is, don't touch any of those buttons. <laughs> okay, I have to get some ice water. Do you remember how we make dough, Gussie? How do we make it? What do we need? We need it in here. We do make it in there and then we give it a big whirl, right? Yeah, and this is going to be yummy. Okay, I need about a quarter of a cup, and I've got to get my butter. Where's my butter? <gasps> I need something to drink. You need something to drink? I'll get you something to drink. What do you need? Um, you need some cocoa? Yeah. Anytime before Gus and I start cooking, we get a little cup of tea for me, a little cup of cocoa for him, and then we jump into our recipe. So you guys, this dough is so fantastic and simple and this whole tart is like the easiest thing on earth. I know that making um, homemade pie crust is for sure probably one of the most intimidating things for any home cook. And um, I have this dough that is so entirely no-brainer. You guys are gonna love it. Because first of all, it takes all of, you know, five minutes to make, as you're gonna see. All I'm doing right now. Oh yeah, okay, hang on, bud. All I'm doing is cutting up a stick of butter into little tiny pieces. I've got my water, which you're gonna hang on to that for me, okay, buddy? You got it? <laughs> okay. You got the butter? I've got the butter, babe. Okay, so let's scooch you down a little bit so everybody can see us. So we're going to put the goodies in here now. So guys, all this is a little bit of flour, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, and five second whirl. If you don't have um, a Cuisinart, that is okay as well. You can do this just as easily with, um, you know, your bowl and your two forks. Or if you have a little pastry, um, a little um, pastry cutter, use that. A couple tablespoons of sugar. I use about a tablespoon of salt. I always use my hands on this kind of stuff. I'm pretty much a guesser when it comes to this stuff. That just tells you how foolproof it is because you can kind of guess your way through the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna give this a quick roll. Hang on, not yet. We're gonna give this a quick roll and mix it up. And then you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put the butter in, okay? It's almost your turn, Gus. It's almost your turn. I'm putting the butter in. Oh, not yet, yet. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, I'm going to give this a whirl. All I'm looking for, I want the crust to turn into little pea-sized bits. I have to put the water in. Okay, that's it. Now you get to pour the water in, but we don't want the ice cubes. Woo! There you go. Good job, buddy. Oh, one of the ice cubes went in. Well, that should be okay. <laughs> You're crunching around. <laughs> you typically don't want your ice cube to fall in it, but it's not gonna hurt. And that's it. This dough is done. That is as fast as it gets. I just have to show it to you guys so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, you can. And Gussie and I love tasting dough. Be careful of the blade. Let's taste it. Do you like it? Mmm. Isn't that good? And then all I do is I take the dough out. Watch your fingers. Take the dough out. I always dip my hands in flour. I dump it. I take the dough, my hands have been dipped in flour. And I just basically turn it into this little love pile here. And then I throw it in the fridge for about an hour. And then I'm ready to roll it out and we'll do the next step. And let's get you something to drink in the meantime. So my beautiful dough is in the refrigerator and um, like I said, I'm going to leave that in there for about an hour. In the meantime, 
I've got these gorgeous, delicious smelling peaches. Mind you, it is winter here, so I get it. Again, kind of blasphemy that I'm making a rustic peach tart in the middle of winter, but man, when you live in Wisconsin, sometimes you just have to get a little bit of summer in any way that you can. So for me, it's doing this kind of stuff. So when I make um, a peach tart, sometimes I can't find fresh peaches and I have to use frozen. I don't think they're as good, but what I, but you know, you can use them. I just score the bottom of the peaches and then I plunk them in a boiling bath of water. Now, the reason that I do this is because this is about the fastest way that I have found to get their skin off. I also do this um, with my summer tomatoes. Um, and you're not trying to cook your fruit, okay? All you're trying to do is get them in the water, a nice hot, whoop, without burning yourself, nice hot um, pot of water, for like I said, a good 30 or 40 seconds. In the meantime, um, you prepare a nice cool bath for them to be plunked into when you're done so that right away they go from you know the whirlpool into the chili pool and then you're for sure not cooking them but the skin just goes and comes right off. So let me grab my big bowl for that. So in my big bowl, I just dump a bunch of ice Okay, and then um, I just fill this baby up with water. Excuse me, Teddy. And then I've got this perfect bath. So I've got to scoop back over there really quickly, get my peaches out, plunk them back in here. But I want this thing to be like so icy cold for them. All right, so for sure my peaches are done by now. Take them out. Oh, a little bit longer. See, I can tell that they're not quite, well, that one looks like it's done. You can tell, and I'll show you, because the skin literally is starting to peel right off. So that's perfect. That's exactly, exactly what I'm looking for. I'll just get them all out and freeze their little patooties off, and then I'll peel the skin off. So then, you know, pull your peaches out of the water, throw them into a colander, and basically the skins should just come right off. You can see, you know, I barely have to touch this at all. It just kind of slides right off. That's when you know you've done them for long enough in the water, and they just, they just come off very, very easily. See, I just, I'm barely even having to touch it with a knife, and it's off. So I um, have peeled all my peaches, and you know when I when I slice these up, there's no magic to it for me. I just uh, I slice them, however. So you can see I've got my peaches, and I've got my really gooey hands. <laughs> um, and while my dough is still in the fridge, I am just going to um, make up my filling. So this again, this is so quick, and you know you would barely need to do this, honestly. But um, I just throw my peaches in the bowl. And um, I add a little bit of cornstarch to them, and it ends up being um, about a tablespoon or so. And I also add um, a bit of sugar. Let me grab my sugar. And again, you can totally eyeball this. I put it down in my recipe, but it's about three tablespoons of sugar. You know, um, if the peaches don't seem very sweet to you, then you know, add a little bit more. Um, and then you can flavor it however you like, whatever you choose to do. What I like to do is um, I love just, you know, a little bit of cloves. I think that's really good. And then a little bit of cinnamon I think is wonderful. I do think that um, ginger is wonderful with peaches. And then just get in there and mix it up. Um, you know, a lot of people don't even spice these kinds of things. I think spiced peaches are so good and they smell amazing. And of course I just have to Mm. I mean, they're just wonderful. Now what the cornstarch does, just in case you're wondering, is um, since these are kind of wet, once you roll out your dough and you slam these into the middle and you pull up the edges and everything, the cornstarch um, allows the whole bottom not to get very soggy. So once the peaches are cooking, they will start to emit their fluids, you know, they'll start to leak around a little bit. And the cornstarch will gobble up all those fluids and turn, you know, make it a little bit more, um, a little thicker. You could use tapioca, that kind of thing, potato starch, but you know, I just use cornstarch. So I'm gonna let this just sit for a little bit and um, I'm gonna then grab my dough, roll it up, and put this baby together. 
So I've got my um, parchment paper covered cookie sheet and I'm gonna grab my dough because it is so chillin'. Huh? <laughs> so all I wanna do is roll this thing and just keep moving it around. The secret to making a lovely pastry is just to keep moving it. Make sure it doesn't get sticky at all. Make sure that you're kind of making a nice circle and just keep turning it around and dust it with a little bit of flour until you have formed a circle that's like 13 inches or so. And you can see I'm not applying too, too much pressure because if I do, what'll happen is the whole thing will go and then all the edges will get all crooked and ugly. So this is just about right. It's about, um, you can see it's about an eighth of an inch thick and it's just like, it's so good. This is not even the kind of dough that you have to, typically what I will do is to get my dough over there very easily, I'll just roll it over my pin and then I will gently bring it over and I will unroll it. So at this point, this recipe gets easier by the minute, huh? So then all I'm gonna do is dump the peaches in the middle and um, don't, if there's a bunch of juice in the bottom at this point, don't take it with it because um, they're going to continue to make their own juice. And then this part is so simple. All you do, do not be intimidated, this is rustic. Remember, not like fancy schmancy, just totally rustic. Bring the dough up, spread the peaches out a little bit. Keep a few inches around the edge, okay, you know, so that you have the ability to bring the dough up. And you see I'm not doing any little perfect dance here. I'm literally just bringing it up. I'm pinching it just the tiniest bit. What you want to avoid are any cracks around the edge. So take your time, take a sip of your tea. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> I get so fast, but I don't want any cracks around there. So I just kind of pinch it. Now you can basically see what she's become. Rustic, cool, you know, the kind of thing you're gonna find in France or Italy in some cool little inn that you're driving through the country and you come across. Grab an egg um, and crack it. And then just put oop, a little shell, bad girl. Put a little bit of water in with it and give it a whirl. <clears throat> now what you're gonna do with the egg is you're going to brush the egg onto the dough and it's going to serve two purposes. One is that it's going to allow your crust to become the um, beautiful show-off crust that we all want. So basically, you know, grab, a, grab your um, egg and um, brush her. And you know, again, this is not about perfection, darlings. This is just about getting the egg on the dough and that's all it is and it will make it so pretty. So, oh, I never told you the second purpose. The second purpose of this wonderful wash is that you're gonna sprinkle it with some pretty sugar. And it's basically, um, I'll show you how pretty, it's raw sugar, it comes by many different names. Some people call it something fancier than I do. I just call it pretty sugar because that's what it is. It is, it comes in like a bag like this, um, turbinado sugar. It's basically, um, it is you know, cane sugar and then what they do is they wash away um, to get the white sugar that we all use. And then this is what's left over in the end. And I think this is the stuff you really want. This is called raw sugar. And what's so, and run really coat it on your beautiful little um, rustic tart because it's so cool. I love all the texture it adds to it. And then give yourself a little extra on the top because again, we haven't put a whole lot of sugar in this thing. Then take a little bit of butter and um, put a few little splotches of it across the top. So there, this gem is done. Pop it in the oven, 400 degrees. 40 minutes later, approximately, you are gonna be the queen or king of your kitchen. So while my uh, lovely rustic tart is cooking, what I usually do is um, take all my leftover stuff out to my ducks. And that's one of the perks of living in the country is that you can have ducks and stuff like that. And then, they are so happy because all this leftover gunk, like some of the peaches that are you know, not looking so good, and then all my leftover greens, makes them so happy. So I'm gonna take this outside for them, and I'll be back.
So the tart hot is so beautiful and hot and ready. You can see how gorgeous and golden brown it is. So at this point, guys, I just leave it on my pan for about 10 minutes and then I slide it onto a cooling rack. I've just always done it that way. I feel like it just perfects it. <laughs> Here's the deal, you can use any fruit. Um, you know, plums are marvelous with this. I also love doing peaches with some raspberries in the middle or some blueberries. And again, you can use frozen fruit. I usually thaw it a little bit and let a lot of the water go away. Frozen fruit just doesn't have as much flavor. I don't think it has the same essence that fresh fruit does. But you know, experiment with this a little bit. Again, you saw how fast the dough is. Sometimes make a double batch of dough. And then you can make two in a weekend. So I'm gonna let this cool off. The boys just got home from school. I'm going to give them a mama spoiler and I'm gonna let them have a little bit of this with a little whipped cream. So you guys know I am such a big believer in you know spoiling yourself a little bit every day, surrounding yourself with beautiful things, you know, little tiny things, you know, embracing the imperfections of life, all that good stuff. And I also believe in finding a way, if you can, if not each day, a few times a week, spoil somebody else. And you know what? Life is a full circle. It will always come back around to you.